In this video, we are going to talk about what is supervised learning. And then in the following videos this week, we are going to go into more detail about the algorithms that you could use, the models that you could learn uh, in the context of supervised learning. Let's start with an example. Suppose you are in the emergency room and uh, a patient comes into the ER. You are running multiple tests on the patient, getting their information. So for example, you get their blood pressure, their heart rate, the temperature, their age and sex, and so on. The decision you have to make is whether you should admit this patient into the intensive care unit or not. The logic for you to admit somebody to the ICU is that uh, if you if the patient can survive only for less than a month, then they get higher preference, higher priority to, uh, to be admitted to the ICU. So the problem, the classification problem, is to identify those high-risk patients from low-risk patients. So in this task, you are basically grouping patients walking into the ER as either the high-risk patients or low-risk patients. It is, it's a classification task with two possible outcomes, two possible labels. Let's take another example. Here, you uh, are in the market to buy health insurance, and you uh, you ask your friends whether they have bought health insurance and ask and see whether they are similar to you in different aspects. So here, your logic uh, to make the decision is you will buy health insurance if those who are like you, those who are similar to you, have also bought health insurance. Okay, because you think that you are in the same risk bracket as they are, uh, and the decision that your friends make is basically what uh, you would want to make. You are collecting information about age, about health condition, uh, about income levels for your friends, and making your judgment based on that. So the decision is whether you should or should not buy health insurance. So again, it's a uh, it's a two-class problem where you are either going to make a decision that you would buy health insurance or that you would not. So as humans, we learn from past experience, right? If you are uh, a physician in uh, the emergency room or you are, um, you are in the market for, for buying health insurance, both of these are uh, conditions where you're looking at other experience you have had, the fact that other friends have been in a similar situation and they have made a choice one way or the other, or uh, looking at patients coming into the AR, you are making a choice of um, kind of choosing those that are high risk and looking at their um, temperature or their health, uh, their, their uh, test results to make a decision. Similarly, a computer learns from data from past instances. The uh, this information really from past instances about what are the features or what snippets of information would be relevant to make a decision, and then what was the decision for these past instances. This approach of using existing data to make a predictive model to make a uh, to make a classification logic that can help you in. Uh, deciding for unseen instances is called supervised learning. So supervised learning, the goal is to uh, learn a classification model that's called a classifier from labeled instances, from past instances for which you know what the decision was, so as to predict labels for unseen instances. So for um, a new patient walking into the ER. The instances are usually uh, called X, and uh, you yield a boldface X to indicate that it is a vector of multiple features. So you're identifying multiple things about um, the data instance on which you are going to make a decision. And Y is the uh, set of uh, y, the small Y is the class label that you uh, that you have assigned to an instance. So for example, uh, on the task of whether you should admit a patient into the ICU, the X 
is all the features that you have collected from the patient, their blood pressure, heart rate, temperature, age, and so on. And capital Y, which is the set of all possible options from which you choose one, uh, has two elements. So, so you're making a choice between high-risk patients, uh, making a, a choice between the label of high-risk patient or whether the patient is a low-risk patient, right? So for each instance, you are going to collect these four or more features that are shown by X and assigning one of the two labels, either the patient is a high-risk patient or a low-risk patient. So uh, in my supervised learning setup, when you have only two possible outcomes, when you have only two possible classes, this is called a binary classification task. When you have more than two possible outcomes, so that means the size of the set of output labels, set, that's y, the size of y is greater than two, this is called a multi-class classification problem. So if it is two possible outcomes, it's a binary classification. And if it's more than two, it's a multi-class classification problem. For both of these, typically you're going to use one. You're going to choose one of the possible outcomes you, uh, uh, outcomes you have. When you have each instance getting labeled with more than one label from the set, this is called a multi-label classification. So this is the kind of distinction I would want to, uh, you to know about, about a multi-class classification problem and a multi-label classification problem. A multi-label classification is always multi-class because you have to have more than two options to be able to assign um, an instance with more than one variables, uh, so more than one class labels. So let's take an example. Um, suppose you have a document that uh, talks about, uh, let's say, coronavirus and what the uh, what the U.S. government is doing about it. It is both a health document and a U.S. government or a policy or a politics document, right? So, uh, but it is not a. a uh, entertainment document, let's say, right? So if you have your your uh, classes as politics, health, entertainment, um, business, sports, uh, and you are talking about the coronavirus response from uh, the White House, it is going to be a politics document and a health document, right? As compared and other document, other labels are not relevant here. So so that would be a multi-label uh, task. Uh, there is also a variation uh, that you should know about, and that is when instead of the whole document getting one label or more labels, um, each word in the document gets a label or each element of the sequence of a sentence, let's say, gets a label. This is called a sequential labeling problem. It is also a supervised learning task, but uh, here the label is not assigned to one, uh, not, you're not assigning just one label for the entire document, but you're assigning one label for each word in the document. Um, a typical example is if you have a sentence and you want to assign part of speech tag for that sentence. So for example, if you want to say something like, uh, Mary met Adam, and that's a sentence, a simple three word sentence. Uh, Mary is a noun, met is a verb, Adam is noun. You want to be able to assign for this sentence, uh, the first word, Mary, gets the label noun. The second word, met, gets the label verb and the third word Adam gets a label noun. So that would be a sequential labeling task. Okay, um, so let's take some examples. Suppose you have this condition of disease staging where you have to classify a condition as absent or mild or moderate or severe. What kind of uh, supervised learning task it is? Let's, uh, I'll give you about uh, five seconds for you to think about it. So this is a multi-class classification problem. You're going to 
uh, label each instance as either absent or mild or moderate or severe, right? So it's one of four choices. So it's a multi-class classification problem. Let's take this other example. Uh, suppose you have to decide whether a tumor is benign or malignant. Two options. So it's a binary classification problem. What about this? You're predicting the survival rate of patients with specific characteristics. You are predicting a rate. There are not really one or a few instances from choose to choose from. In fact, this is a regression problem because the output is actually a number. A rate is a number. Uh, so it is not a classification problem. It's a regression problem, uh, but it is still a supervised learning problem, right? Okay. So uh, again, we have seen, uh, kind of, let's recap that the goal of supervised learning is to learn a classification model from labeled instances and to us to predict labels for unseen instances. So you, are now, uh, you have two words here, labeled instances and unseen instances. What are those? Labeled instances are instances that have a class label. So for every instance X, you have a label Y from a large set of possible choices, right? Uh, these labeled instances are then needed to train the classification model. Unseen instances are those instances that the classifier is not seeing when it is training the model. So these instances are hidden or not used uh, when you are training the model. Uh, and these class, in fact, the classification models that have been trained using the labeled instances can be used to predict the label for these instances, for these unseen instances. So the, uh, and that prediction task is sometimes called inference task. So you, uh, you could also say the models are used to infer the label for these instances, for unseen instances. Okay, the assumption that is made in a supervised learning task is that unseen instances follow the same distribution as the labeled instances. This becomes important because you have not seen any of the unseen instances uh, on which you're going to actually apply the model, right? So uh, if, if you give something completely different from what the model has already seen, you cannot expect the model to perform very well. Uh, because the model has not seen an example like that. So the, the typical assumption made is that both labeled instances on which the model is trained on and these unseen instances on which you are going to infer the label are all coming from the same distribution or they are very similar. They are kind of similar to each other. So even though you have not seen instances, uh, these unseen instances in your training stage, um, you know that the the model that has been trained on instances are not uh, completely different from what you're going to see. Okay, so you're going to be tested on things that you kind of uh, know about, even though they are not you have not actually seen the particular instances. Okay, so that's an important assumption in supervised learning task. Once you have that, um, you uh, the the two kind of components that are there in supervised learning is this training phase and a test phase. Training phase uses a data set called, called training data set. That are, those are the instances that are used to train the model. Uh, these are labeled data sets. So for supervised learning task, uh, all of these instances have to have class label. So that means they are labeled set. And uh, the second data set that is uh, used in the second phase is called the test data set where uh, uh, that consists of instances for which you are going to infer the label. These are unseen uh, data, which means that these instances are not going to be used for training the model. And if these are also labeled, then you can see how well your model has done, uh, has performed on this set. So you are not going to use the label at all. You are going to uh, run it, uh, infer the labels as if you don't know the labels. But if you already know what their true labels are, then you can use that to compare how well your models have performed on these tasks, these instances. So again, uh, it is important to know that you don't do any training on the test data set. So test data set is almost kind of kept separate 
uh, during training you are going to only use the training data for training purposes and then you are going to infer the labels on the test data set and if the test data set is also labeled then you are going to use it for uh, identifying how well you have done so evaluating your model again training and test data set are assumed to follow the same distribution that they come from the same distribution so uh, in the training phase you are we have we are learning a model based on this training data set uh, the kind of questions that you're answering here is what kind of model would you want to learn how would you learn it right and uh, can you learn such a model from this data set what is the algorithm the approach uh, that you would use to learn this model and uh, whether it's efficient or not does it give you a good model or not and so on um uh, it also involves what how will you set the parameters so how many parameters do you need to set and how are you going to set those parameters or configure the model uh, so as to get the best model you could in the testing phase you're going to uh, infer the labels and evaluate this model on the unseen test data here you also need to know uh, what is a, a good measure of evaluation especially in a domain that uh, on which you're going to apply so for example if it is the icu um, admittance kind of a task then you need to know for this particular task of uh, admitting a patient into the icu or not what uh, are you most worried about are you worried about missing uh, the high risk patients or are you worried about including too many low risk patients um, and, and that would be a measure of evaluation of your classification technique. Um, there are multiple supervised models that you can use to train your model. Uh, we are going to talk about uh, quite a few of them. Uh, decision trees is one model uh, that we're going to talk about, talk about later today. Uh, K nearest neighbor is another model or you have support vector machines or naive base that you might have heard of earlier. Um, we are going to talk about it next week. Um, logistic regression, Bayesian models uh, or neural network models, genetic algorithms or ensemble based models like bagging and boosting um, and maybe other models that are depending on specific data that, that uh, you might be using. So for example, if you are working on um, a, a signal coming from a monitoring device, right? Um, so if, you're, if, if a patient is hooked up in, uh, with a, a model and that is kind of generating, let's say, ECG, uh, that is a very different kind of data set coming in. So you may want to use different methods for uh, those data. Uh, we are going to talk about m quite a few of these uh, approaches in uh, the next few videos. Um, before we end this video uh, about what is supervised learning, I want to also kind of introduce different terms that you would see related to supervised learning. So we talked about supervised learning as example where all of the instances need to have a label so that you can use it for training the model. Suppose you have a lot of data, but only a few of those instances are labeled. What would you do? That kind of learning approach is called a semi-supervised learning approach. Uh, where you are learning both from labeled and unlabeled data. Uh, specifically, you are, uh, you are using the supervised approaches for, to learn from labeled data, but then you are using some of the statistics from all of the other data, set, uh, data. that means uh, the unlabeled data included, to learn about other patterns that you, uh, that for which you need more data, right? So, so that kind of approach is called semi-supervised learning. What if you have no labeled instances at all? Then it's called unsupervised learning. So uh, the kind of approaches like um, clustering or topic modeling are examples of unsupervised learning. If you have a few instances, but you could ask an expert or uh, you could ask for more labels as needed. Uh, but of course, because it is uh, you're asking an expert, uh, their time might be critical. So you don't want to ask them too many instances. You could choose an examples that you want um, to ask uh, the expert's opinion about. If, if it's that kind of a scenario, that's called active learning, where you learn uh, from a uh, learn uh, a model and then kind of tune the model or, or uh, change the model slightly as you uh, get more instances or more labels when you're asking the expert. 
Finally, uh, we talked about uh, another kind of term that ended with the learning last time called reinforcement learning, where uh, you choose the best action uh, in a series of actions, you choose an action uh, without really getting uh, a sense of whether that's a good step to take or not, but you eventually get a reward. And then you can see based on the eventual reward, whether that step that you had taken, the, the decision that you had taken early on was appropriate or not.